Hey everybody, welcome back to our 30-day EKG challenge. We're on day 16. We're going to be going over um, some more atrial tachyarrhythmias. This one is a fun one, so uh, let's dive into it. So the first thing I notice here whenever I look at this rhythm is that I have a very rapid, regular, narrow, complex rhythm. And so if I zoom in a little bit, I'll notice that one, it's a narrow, complex rhythm, meaning that my QRS duration is less than 120 milliseconds. Remember that the QRS duration is le being less than 120 milliseconds tells me that those signals are probably coming through those Hisperkinji fibers and causing rapid QRS complex. So this rhythm must be a rhythm that is at least arising from that AV node or higher or supraventricular origin. So that tells me that. It's very regular. Notice that these QRS complexes are occurring at quite a predictable pattern. And if I want to determine the rate, I'll pick a QRS that lands about on a solid line. And I'll go here. This one lands just after that solid line. So that would be 300, 150, probably 145 beats per minute or so. And so whenever I see a narrow complex rhythm at 145 beats per minute that's regular, what does our differential include? Well, our differential includes something like, let's think, a sinus, tachycardia. We could have two to one atrial flutter. We could have forms of SVT, such as AV nodal reentry tachycardia or a V reentry tachycardia. So obviously we have um, certain things on our differentials, right? Even, let's see, ectopic atrial tachycardia as well. And so how do I evaluate this? And obviously we know that this is a video about what? A V nodal reentry tachycardia. So I evaluate this rhythm by looking for sinus P waves that are occurring before my QRSs. I don't really see P waves that are consistent in any I might see some baseline um, patterns. I look scan through, I don't see any P waves, right? No P waves, no P waves. V1 usually has nice sharp P waves. And so that rules out sinus tachycardia. So no sinus tach. What about two to one atrial flutter? Well, two to one atrial flutter usually shows nice flutter waves in V1. I don't see any flutter waves. So probably not two to one atrial flutter. Ectopic atrial tachycardia, what about that one? Well, that one would have ectopic P waves in front of my QRS complexes. And if I scan through, I don't see any ectopic P waves in front of those QRSs. And so I'd say it's not that. And so now let's talk about AV nodal reentry tachycardia. And so in AV in RT, the reentry pathways within the AV node itself, right? So let's, let's write this out. A, V, node, oh, AV node or nodal reentry, right? So the reentry is within the AV node itself. And if I zoom in really, 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 really close, what happens in this rhythm without getting into too much detail, I have another full AV node reentry tachycardia lecture on the mechanism that I think you guys would enjoy. Um, but what, what happens is we get signal that's trapped in the AV node. In the signal, there's actually two pathways in the AV node. And what can happen is signal can get trapped doing this. Signal can go down, anterograde through the AV node. And then it can also travel up, retrograde through the AV node. And it can do that over and over and over again. And every time it does that, every time it sends signal down, anterograde, it'll also conduct that signal to the ventricles. And then whenever it goes up retrograde, it'll conduct signal to the atria and depolarize the atria. And so what ends up happening is you get almost near simultaneous signal that's going this way and then generating what? This is my QRS and then this way. And what is that? Those are retrograde P waves. And so what happens is you get these merging of these P's and these QRS. 
but sometimes you can actually get a little bit of evidence of these retrograde P's, and that seals the diagnosis. So what we'll notice, this is a really good concept, is you can look in V1. Oftentimes, V1 up here is the best for retrograde P waves. And same thing with AVR, right? If my P waves are going to be sent retrograde up from the AV node, they're going to probably be positive in AVR. And the same thing happens here. If I get retrograde P waves headed up from my AV node, sometimes you get P waves that are nice and sharp in V1. And so what you'll see is you'll get something called, if I look here in AVR in V1, you get something called a pseudo R prime. And this pseudo R prime, I'm actually going to make it a lowercase r, a pseudo R prime, notice that at the end of this QRS, here's the beginning of my QRS where we've got this nice normal QRS, and then look at this little R prime. So look at these R primes, and you can even see them here in V1. So in V1, you've got your QRS complex, and then you've got this little R prime. And that R prime on both of those are actually pseudo R primes. And what are they representing? Those are representing those retrograde P waves, right? Those are retrograde atrial activity. Because remember what's happening is we're getting signal that's doing what? It's going down this pathway and then through to the ventricles to create our QRS. And then just after that, it's going right back up to go there in critter P waves. So sometimes you can get evidence of this P waves right at the end of the QRS. And that's what we see here. Those are our pseudo R prime waves. So this is a really good example of AV nodal reentry tachycardia. AV nodal reentry, meaning that the reentry pathway is within the AV node itself. And so some, usually a premature beat occurred just at the right time where a signal gets trapped within the AV node. So Obviously, with that being the case, it's going to be a very regular reentry rhythm that is most often narrow, complex in nature. Because remember, when it generates that QRS, the QRS is generated when signals go down my his Purkinje system, which is going to be rapidly conducting. Obviously, if this individual has a right bundle or left bundle branch block at baseline and they go into AVNRT, they're going to go into AVNRT with a right or left funnel branch block, and that's going to look different. We're going to see those widening of the QRS complex, but we don't have that here. So uh, let's talk a little bit about maybe some treatment then. We've localized AVNRT as a reentry within the AV node. So from a medication standpoint, what can we give that's going to completely block the AV node? The workhorse here is this medication called Adenosin. Adenosin. Adenosin is the workhorse from a medical uh, standpoint because it's a very short acting drug. It lasts for maybe 8 10 seconds and it's a potent AV node blocker. It will absolutely block the AV node for 10 seconds, which will stop the reentry pathway and do what? It'll ideally give the sinus node time to recover because every single retrograde P wave is suppressing my sinus node and my sinus node is not going to work. So adenosine works. If you're, say you're at a birthday party and you think someone's got AV, NRT for whatever reason, you don't have adenosine, well, you can do things like vagal maneuvers. You can do vagal maneuvers like bearing down. That increases, what does that do? That increases parasympathetic tone. Parasympathetic Tone. And how does that in increase um, our chances of breaking this reentry pathway? Well, remember that we get parasympathetic fibers that supply our nodes. And so if our parasympathetic nervous system, if our parasympathetic nervous system is sending fibers to my AV node, well, if I augment that with vagal maneuvers, then I might um, send inhibitory signals. Remember, our parasympathetic is our rest and relax um, nervous system, or at least the aspect of our autonomic nervous system. So those are just a few um, kind of basic concepts with AV nodal range or tachycardia. Obviously, if they're really unstable, you can shock them, right? So we can shock them um, with synchronized cardioversion. Uh, and yeah, 
So that's kind of the idea of AV nodal reentry. So I hope that helps. Remember that we localize this to the AV node and you can get some features because of those pseudo R prime waves that represent some of those retrograde atrial P waves that occur in this, in this rhythm. So hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions about it, throw it down in the comments. If not, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next DKG video. Take care.